Flashman's Lady by George MacDonald Frazier, book review. So this is the sixth book now in the Flashman series. I've uh, so far read and reviewed on this channel Flashman, Royal Flash, Flash for Freedom, Flashman at the Charge, Flashman at the Great Game, and now here's book number six, Flashman Lady. Sorry, Flashman's Lady. I, I'm still having fun with this series, so I'm still continuing on with it. <clears throat> Although I should say, by way of disclaimer, these books are great guilty pleasures. I would hate to have to defend them to anyone. Uh, there's probably a lot of Orientalism in this book, the, the practice of using the Far East as an exotic backdrop for Westerners having adventures in. Uh, there's probably a bit of sexism thrown in the, into these books as well. I mean, I think the books are meant to be a parody of Flashman's misogyny, but, but sometimes in <clears throat> there, there's a fine line between satirizing something and perpetuating it. Uh, and occasionally maybe that line gets crossed here. I'm not sure. At any rate, I do find these books enjoyable though. They're very colorful, uh, there's lots of adventures in them, and they're a very pleasant and interesting way to learn history. So that caveat aside, uh, let's dive into this one. It's common for these Flashman books to cover about two or three different topics uh, or areas of the world. Uh, this book can be divided into roughly three parts. Each part is about 100 pages each, uh, and then the book is about 300 pages as a whole. So the first 100 pages are dealing with uh, cricket, uh, you know, like the, the sport that they play in England. Uh, it's dealing with cricket, the cricket and the cricket scene in England in the 1840s. Second 100 pages are dealing with Singapore and Malaysia. Um, well, what, what is now Malaysia? I guess what was in Borneo in the 1840s. Uh, and the third one is dealing with uh, Madagascar during the 1840s, the last 100 pages. So the first 100 pages dealing with cricket. Um, I'm not a big sports fan, so this wasn't my favorite part of the book. Uh, I found it a little bit dry. Your mileage would, might vary. If you're more interested in sports or more interested in cricket than I am, you might find this section more interesting. It wasn't terrible. There was a gambling scandal and there's a personal rivalry. So it's, it's not just all kind of bats and wickets. Uh, th there is some personality conflict going on here in there. But I, I felt like it went on a little bit too long, and I, as I was reading this, I was just kind of like, "All right, come on, let's 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 get going. Let's let's get to the Far East or kind of the more exotic parts of the globe." Then there's a brief detour. Excuse me. There's a brief detour in the storyline for Flashman and his friends to witness a public execution. Uh, the scene that's described there reminded me of something I heard once uh, on an audiobook. I think it was called Eyewitnesses to History. It was a collection of eyewitness uh, accounts throughout history. Uh, one of them was Charles Dickens' eyewitness account of a hanging he witnessed in England. Um, and the Flashman, the description in Flashman reminded me a lot of that Charles Dickens thing. Uh, the bloodlust of the mob, uh, a lot of the other details of the, the hanging. And then sure enough, you go to the end notes in the back of this book and uh, <clears throat> George MacDonald Frazier references Charles Dickens' description as one of his, his references. So uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that was not a completely a coincidence there. Second part of the story takes place in Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, I have, over the past few years, uh, had the pleasure of interacting with a lot of people from Singapore and Malaysia, and I've become very fascinated with the history of those countries. Uh, it seems like an interesting combination of British colonialism mixed with the indigenous Malay culture, mixed with the Chinese immigrants who have come in there. 
So I was really looking forward to this section, um, but George MacDonald Frazier doesn't really go into this, which is a pity because he can be really descriptive when he wants to be about the local cultures. Um, but there's not much detail or history about the British involvement in Singapore there, uh, which was slightly disappointing. Um, but then what he does do when you get into, uh, again, modern day Malaysia, I, I believe it was Borneo then, the, the island of Borneo in Indonesia, uh, is one of the forgotten characters of the Victorian Empire, a guy named James Brooke, who was apparently famous for going up and down Malaysia and Indonesia battling river pirates. Now, in one of the afterwords to the book, uh, George MacDonald Frazier hints that James Brooke has been left out of the history books as part of a politically correct plot to cover up the good that the British Empire actually did. Quoting from the authors afterward, Nowadays, when it is fashionable to look only on the dark side of imperialism, not much is heard of James Brooke. He was one of those Victorians who gave empire building a good name." End quote. Now, I don't know anything about James Brooke myself, so I'm going to admit I'm up front, I'm completely ignorant of it. That being said, this kind of language makes me uneasy. And, and I felt like at this point, up until this point in the Flashman books, I, I had felt like I largely agreed with George MacDonald Frazier's politics. Now I'm feeling like he's, he, he's advocating a foreign military intervention here, which I would want to distance myself from. But again, I'm, I'm not an expert on this subject, and politics aside, it's a fascinating adventure story. Uh, so James Brooke was fighting pirates on the Batang Lupar River and engaging in what was known as river fighting. I had never heard of river fighting before, but I, you know, I guess it means taking one of these big ships that's designed for battle on the high seas and maneuvering them up and down these rivers. And you know, like some of these rivers are huge, so I, I, I guess you could get one of these big ships up and down the river. And they're fighting pirates on the river. Uh, and it's just fascinating how different river fighting is than fighting on the traditional open ocean. And George MacDonald Frazier does a very good job of de describing it. Uh, talks about the different smaller spy boats that would run up and down the river looking for the enemy. Talking about the ambushes when the enemy comes out of like behind the, uh, the jungle foliage or you know when, when the enemy is hiding up one of the smaller creeks. Uh, you know, I, I just never thought about all these maneuvers that are possible with these big ships on a river. It, it, it was really interesting. Uh, and although it's historical fiction, as always in these Flashman books, it's based on real history. Uh, this campaign actually did take place, and as usual, in his footnotes, uh, author George MacDonald Frazier backs up most of what happens in the novel with references to diaries from the surviving members of the expedition, indicating that even some of the more unbelievable sounding episodes are straight out of history. Then the last third of the book takes place in Madagascar, which was ruled in the 1840s by the terrible queen uh, Rana, Rana Valo, Rana Valo. I, I had never heard of Ranavalo before, uh, nor read much of anything about the history of Madagascar. So this was all completely new to me. Uh, I don't really have any insights to say other than it was interesting to learn about. And yeah, I mean, once again, I found this Flashman book to be a completely, a completely enjoyable read. Okay, some more nitpicks here. Um, this is number six in the Flashman series, the book which breaks the chronological order. So up and now, the first five books have been proceeding in chronological order. Uh, so one book happens and the next book happens after that one. This one uh, jumps back in time uh, to the years 1842 to 1845, which is 
after the first Flashman book, but before the second Flashman book. Uh, and then from here on out, the Flashman book series are going to jump around in chronology. Now, uh, George MacDonald Frazier has already laid the seeds to this to a large extent, because throughout this book, the narrator Flashman is constantly talking about all his adventures, and it's very apparent that he's had more adventures than the reader is privy to. So going back and covering some of these later adventures and some of these, these years that didn't get previously covered makes a lot of sense, but... As always, when you do these kind of prequel things, you're going to create holes in continuity. I don't know if anybody else cares about this, but I grew up as a nerd. You know, I, I grew up as a Star Trek fan, a Trekkie, uh, and, and we were trained to kind of get anal about this kind of stuff. So, let's get into it then, huh? Um, at the beginning of the book, Flashman runs into his old rival, Tom Brown, from the original source material, Tom Brown's School Days. But previously, in the other books, which chronologically happened after this one, Flashman meets Scud East, and he had no idea who Tom Brown was. Scud East had to remind him of it. He said, no, no, remember Tom Brown. Here, Flashman is meeting Tom Brown again. Uh, and obviously he remembered this because years later he wrote it down in his, in his memoirs. The, the whole conceit of these Flashman series again is that they're the memoirs of the old Flashman. So it, it doesn't make sense that on the one hand he would remember meeting Tom Brown for his memoirs, but he would forget it when he was meeting Scud East. Also, Scud East, uh, when he first meets Flashman uh, in one of the later books, sorry, one of the... One of the previous books, which took place later, uh, he indicates that neither he nor Tom Brown had met Flashman since their school days. Uh, he certainly gives that impression. Um, also, in this book, Flashman and his wife go through a number of shared experiences which complete a character arc. By the end of the, the story, they've got a different relationship and a different understanding than when they started. But then that's not reflected in the previous books, which chronologically come after this book. Um, so it messes up a lot of the continuity, but... Uh, I mean, let's be honest, the continuity, the internal continuity, is not really the point of these books. The point of these books is the historical fiction. You know, to kind of learn some interesting history and to have some fun with it. So, uh, I don't know. It bugged me a little bit, but it, it didn't bug me a lot. Okay. Um, what, one last note. Uh, this book mixes up the narrative slightly. Up until this point, uh, Flashman has been always telling the stories. He's the protagonist and he's also the narrator. Um, in this one, in addition to Flashman's own first-person narrative, Pages from his wife's diary are also intercut with this book. It, it's an interesting way to kind of freshen things up. Uh, you know, this is the sixth book in the series, so maybe it's time to change up the narrative style a little bit. Uh, his wife is so airheaded and so clueless that her portrayal might border on sexist. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's yet another point where I'd be a little bit hard-pressed to defend these Flashman books, even though I found it really funny as I was reading it. Uh, it's really funny to read her version of events and see how little she grasps of what's going on. Uh, and then to make it even better, his wife's diaries entries are edited by his wife's sister, who will occasionally make marginal notes and then jump in when she loses patience with her wife's narration. So it's almost like, uh, you know, Don Quixote. Yeah, you know, Don Quixote is famous for these levels of narration. Okay, maybe it's not quite on the level of Don Quixote, but you've got Flashman, and then you've got Flashman's wife's diaries, and you've got Flashman's sis wife's sister who's editing her wife's diaries, and then the whole thing is footnoted by George MacDonald Frazier, who, under the conceit of these books, is claiming he discovered the Flashman papers in an attic one day or something like that. 
it, 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 it gets quite interesting, the levels of narration, and it, it works, and it's funny. So to sum up, obviously I've got a few nitpicks with this book, but boy did I have fun with it. I, I, I really enjoyed this book. Nitpicks aside, if you like history, I, I think you'll enjoy it.